who offers a stable coin then that and it's easy to use and it doesn't require long public and private keys they're going to be the ones and and and, and while that's a hypothetical statement mm-hmm. if you look at what and financial and some of the chinese uh guys who've already moved strongly into mobile banking they are buying shares and buying up into Klarna and TransferWise. So that I think they're very much looking for who will provide fast, secure, easy digital digital transfer of money. And, and whoever it does, we're going to have a share in that because that's where it's going. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. So I, I want to pivot very briefly um, on just, just the fact that because you're the editor-in-chief at the Irish Tech News and then mm-hmm. the, the Crypto Commonwealth, yeah. And in the environment we're in, where there are so many people who, you know, decry fake news, how, as a journalist and as the editor in chief, do you think about that, and how do you counteract some of those? Yeah. So, uh, I guess it was interesting with, say, like the BBC, for example, who very soon after Trump came in, they realised they were going to have to really double down on fact checking and also the New York Times and Washington Post. Um, So you could see, I think, across the board, uh, media were realizing that uh, if you're going to just be called fake news, then you're going to have to work hard to demonstrate that that's simply uh, not valid, you know, and and to have more attribution, to check more carefully your stories. So so that's, I'd say that's the general climate. Um, With Irish Tech News, uh, with our in-house writers, that would be an ethos that we communicate with them. And then also we're, we have people pitching stories to us all the time and guest posts and stuff like that. And uh, we will very much aim to do due diligence on the people that we work with. And, and very quickly, you know, we'll, you know, we, we will go and see, are they on Twitter? Are they on LinkedIn? Uh, what, what is their digital footprint? Do they even have one? And, and while obviously that can be gamed too, there are actually many that have no discernible digital footprint whatsoever so we're like uh you, you're just not credible we don't believe that you are who you say you are or even your email is juan at one two three dot nothing you know <laughs> so, yeah. so 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 there are there are some things you can do very quickly to begin to assess who am i working with are, are they legitimate and valid people or are they just a shadow front for mm. for god knows what so, so I, I think it's something that, on one hand, we all need to do, and then obviously with, but within the media, we need to do it much, much more so. Mm-hmm. And again, if, so, so UK, Brazil, Turkey, US, you have you have people in power at the moment who are very populist and who've got there by by short short circuiting the debate and the dialogue and just saying, I don't like your question. It's a nasty question. Whereas, uh, uh, you know, and and I'm going to appeal to the lowest common denominator. And and I think it's that's one elections but i don't think it's a long-term sustainable strategy because actually to be data-led uh is a safer m- more honest better way of doing things so 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 so, th- so i mean we've you know we discussed ethics a little bit and we definitely try to to work out does this fit with the ethics of what we want to talk about is it constructed in a way that is based upon real evidence-based things that happen now okay. it's tricky you know, you can't guarantee you'll always do it. And, you know, and we get people writing to say, oh, that person you featured three years ago, it turns out that they did X or Y. And and you're like, well, yes, absolutely. Because you can only research to a certain point. And, and even you never know 100%. It's, you know, it's like Trump's tax returns, you know, like people can stall and evade. So, so I guess, yeah, we definitely think about it. It's something that is very important. And I'd say we aim to do it as well as we can. But, but I don't think it's very hard to hit 100% on that. Right, right. Okay. So, Simon, again, I, I want to thank you for, for joining me today. Um, my last question is, with everything that you've done and experienced and you're seeing now, what would you say has been the best advice that you have ever received? Yeah, so it's, it's a good question. And I have been, I was thinking about it. And uh, <laughs> like, so I, I guess, so so long before Ultra Frisbee, I, I did judo. And judo is... Judo is another sport that is is great, maybe with martial arts in general, let's say, but judo was the one that I knew. I did it for about 15 years. And when you begin, you begin as a white belt. Mm-hmm. And then you work through the grades. And, and you get if you go to the grading and you get promoted, you go, yeah, it was yellow, orange, green, blue, brown, black. But beyond, So black is the one everyone's heard of. Mm-hmm. But then after black is white. 
if you and, and and it's it's almost it's a ceremonial you have to be a seven man black or beyond and and there are very few in the world uh but i kind of like the concept that that there's always someone better than you and then when you reach the top to be the ultimate type in judo you actually go to white which is very clearly symbolically saying that you know there's you know it's like, like sport you know uh, no one wins all the time you know uh if you if you're at the, if you're at the peak someone's going to come and knock you off so i guess as a, as a sport that helps you to understand that you keep trying you do your best uh but but but, but try to be open and don't be arrogant because that way you'll stay open and keep learning and you're less likely to do something stupid now also if we're talking about human beings rather than sporting metaphors um i think i've been fortunate that i've had a lot of people who've been willing to give me time and point me in the direction of where i want to go next so on one hand i've mused on why that's happened and i think it's obviously i've been fortunate and there are great people out there who want to share their time and expertise but then as i've moved along in age and realized they also i think quite liked the fact that i was even interested in listening to them and learning from them so you realize it's like an ongoing wheel that happens that if you if you can stop talking for long enough to listen to the things that people are trying to tell you if you do then people are willing to share more insights with you and then equally if you keep on that path then other people are happy to help and then you know paying it forwards or paying it back is when you try to give the same time and advice to other people so so i guess it's that one either you list one person or, or you don't list but you appreciate that, that, that you got to where you are because many people were helpful and that yet you were open to being helped yeah well that's great Awesome. So, Simon, again, thank you so much for taking the time this morning. I really appreciate it. If the listeners would like to uh, obviously follow you on online or read more of what you're writing and working on, where should they go to do that? Yeah. So, so it's pretty simple in that. So we have Irish Tech News, which will come up. Uh, it's 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 should be findable anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And then, so me, Simon Cocking, is also that's my Twitter handle and that's my LinkedIn. So basically, any article I publish has my email at the end. And then between Twitter and LinkedIn, then you'll find me there as well. So that seems to work and uh, it's a great way to engage. So, yeah, we're happy to hear from people and pitch your stories or tell us what they're up to. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I will put all of those in the show notes so people can click right through. Awesome. Thanks very much. It's been uh, great to talk to you. No problem. Thank you. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Advance Your Hour podcast. If you like this episode, please go into iTunes and give us a five-star rating. And while you're there, hit the subscribe button so that every single time I release a new episode, it will go directly to you without even thinking about it. If you're interested in hearing older episodes, please go to advanceyourart.com where you can find the catalog of everything I've done so far, as well as contact information and projects I'm working on. Thank you again and have a great day.